What's going on y'all, it's B. Hope you're doing well. I don't know about you, but when I'm creating my content, I'm always searching and trying to figure out how am I gonna record and archive my content and maintain my original footage and when I complete a project, where does it go, etc., etc. So I'm breaking down. All right, hold up. Let me interrupt 2019 Brandon really quickly. So I'm editing this thing. You know, it's been a while. It's busy nowadays, but I finally got to edit in this video and I figure why not give you guys a little bit more credibility behind what I'm doing by letting you know that I've been using a workflow I'm contemplating and recommending here in this video for two years now, and it's legit. So I won't steal all of his thunder, but I wanted to let you guys know from 2022 Brandon that what 2019 Brandon is exploring is pretty cool. So hopefully this will be helpful. Try to put it together in a way that might inform you as I wish I would have been informed when I was looking for some solutions for the workflow, but I'll let them get back to it. Hope you're having a good 2022. Happy New Year to y'all. Let's get to it. I'm breaking down and see what we can do if we can get a different workflow, both for archiving and then the holy grail here is to make sure that we can record 10 gigabit and get rid of all the SSDs only from when we are traveling. So if that can work out and, and check all the boxes, let's just see what's good. It's Brandon, another SOC review. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Now let's go. <laughs> it's another exclusive. Uh huh. Yeah. SOC and Marlo. So, let's get it. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. Remember when I just a tap on. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I hope you are well. Uh, for all you guys who are out here content creating, big shout to you. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to talk about was data management. And for anyone that creates content knows that it's all about making sure that we stay organized, have our content and keep the layout together, but we need capacity. And so there are a bunch of things I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get away from all these SSDs, whether it's 500 gig or a terabyte, it's tough to make sure that I always have space for all the projects. Secondly, save a lot of time, always moving files around and archiving. Make sure we keep this thing backed up. And then also try to keep a multimedia server going and back up all the hardware and equipment, both locally here and also in the cloud. So when it comes to editing 4K workflow, especially multi-cam like what I shoot, there are really two options. There's a hard drive, which is the more traditional route where you've got direct connection to the computer, but archiving all these SSDs like the one here get to be a pain and a hassle. And so what we're exploring here is editing over a 10 gigabit connection, because the thought is that the speeds will be just as blazing fast as the hard drive, but with some additional flexibility because you've got archive and you've got backup. And with the speeds, then you can potentially have multiple people accessing the same files. So that's what this video is really all about. So we'll unbox it and then we'll have a look at a bit of the results from a data point of view, because it's all about the data. So putting all that together, what am I going with? I'm going with the Synology Disk Station 1819 Plus. After you do all the research, sometimes you just gotta pull the trigger. So we're gonna talk about that. All right, so here's our setup. We really have two things we have to install. We gotta install the hard drives, in this case, 16 terabyte, three and a half inch SATA drives into our Synology. That's our storage. And then we have to install the 10 gigabit port from Synology into the PCI slot of the disk station so that we can then transfer at 10 gigabit speeds. So here's the final picture, the architecture of the design. We're going from the computer to the Synology and we're using the Sonnet adapter through the CAT7 cable into the PCI slot of the Synology where it's gonna write all the data we need onto our hard drives, simple. So yeah, we're gonna unbox this thing. And so we got an eight base system got four hard drives to work through so with that I'm gonna get up out of this chair we're gonna actually unbox it live and direct and get it all set up and, and see what we can do don't know if I'll come back with the final thoughts right here right now but at least I'll show you what the setup is and how we get that thing rolling and maybe do a quick disk test to see what kind of transmission rates we get let's get to it here we are b-roll studio let's get to unboxing all right so we got three items y'all can barely see me back here you gotta have the 10 gigabit adapter. This is what allows the data to go from my computer via Thunderbolt into this adapter to then flow 10 gigabit directly into the server, the Synology, the disk station. So that's this one. We'll break this one out in the middle, it's the smallest. We also have, of course, the Synology itself. So let's just get into that first. DS1819 Plus, eight bays. Just for those who need to know, DS apparently stands for disk station 18. The eight is the eight bays and the 19 is the year it came out. The plus means that you can add on something. So there's a card there that we're 
going to install that allows again 10 gigabit port. Let's get to open. Power. And there it is. I'm checking out that side view. There you go. Eight base. Like it comes with Ethernet, Ethernet, power, two keys, and multiple screws. Screws. You see these unique keys that look like they're proprietary, honestly. We got two Ethernet cables and the power. So we'll set that to the side for a moment. Here is the 10 gigabyte Sonic breakout box. I actually got this Sonic one because it doesn't have a fan in it. The ones with the fan make a lot of noise. And as you all know, in the studio, that can be a little bit drama, but there it is. Sonic Solo 10G. It's got three colors. If it's green, you're getting 10 gig. Uh, if it's yellow, you're getting 5G to two and a half gig. And then if you get a blinking one, then you got um, one gig or hundred megabit. So there you go. Probably be getting some Cat7 wire to run through that, but there we go. There's the connection. Of course, quick start guide. Should be compatible out the box. Again, Thunderbolt 3, already engaged, so it's ready to go. And from BH. PCIe port. This is an extra port you have to put into the PCI slot that will then, of course, allow us to get 10 gigabit connection to a computer. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. One, two, three, and four. Iron Wolf Pro hard drives. Did a lot of research as to whether or not to get Iron Wolf Pro. Went with the Pro hard drives because they come with a five year warranty and they have the recovery backup that comes along with it. So worst comes to worst, if something happens, they can go. And actually, if you look at this calculation, I'll put it up on the screen now. I looked at how many terabytes you actually get per dollar. These came out to be just under $32 a terabyte, which is actually consistent with the others. But I figured for about the same price, if I can get an extra two terabytes and if I can deal with it now and just fill up four instead of filling up more bays, hey, more capacity into the future. So at this point, I'm ready to install the hard drives. So I pull it out the box, and as you can see from each of the bays, there's actually a plastic piece, eight of them, that you push them in and then the tray comes out. And on top of the tray, you simply gently place the hard drive on top of the tray. Relatively easily, no heavy screws unless it's a really, really big drive, but in the case of these, there's nothing I had to do except tighten with the hand a bit. And then from there, you turn it over and simply place it right into the drive. Now what you'll see is that there's a bit of a hinge, so you kind of put the top in first, and then as the top goes in, you press down on the bottom and in it is. And now here you can see the PCI adapter, which actually goes on the rear of the Synology disk station. Yeah, so let's talk about what's on the back here. We've got four gigabit ports, so those will be used to connect to the internet, but not necessarily directly to the computer. Then we've got one, two, three USB type A ports, an eSATA port, which can be used to daisy chain multiple units. And then here's where we're going, PCI port. Let's put it in. And here we are, it's a simple unscrewing the four screws, lifting the enclosure off, taking off the little protective covering, and then slide it around so you can see it. And we have this analogy that goes right in with a firm little tug. On the screws go on top. You just make sure that's secure. The enclosure goes on top and then the four screws are dialed back in and then we are ready to go. Et voila. We've got four of the eight bays in. So we just finished putting in four of the hard drives from left to right and uh, got the power adapter, got the PCI slot filled in with the ethernet adapter right in this boy right here. So next up, we're gonna plug this into the Thunderbolt cable on the MacBook Pro. Hopefully then use the Cat7 wire. Whoa, Cat7 cable. See if we can get this thing live and check out some transfer speeds. Let's get to it. Get hype. Man, it got me hype. But here's a 100 feet of Cat7 cable is actually what we ended up using. And so connecting that to the adapter, you can see the 10 gigabit port and then the Thunderbolt 3 port. It's not a tremendously long port, so it'll have to be close to the laptop, but it's all good. So here I just place the disk station underneath the desk for now. By the way, this is a video of the illest desk. I highly recommend it. And we'll get this thing setting up. All you do is power it up and the OS will boot up. And then all you have to do is set it up 
And I highly recommend Space Rex or 9to5Mac who've got brilliant setup videos if you're looking to get it configured. It doesn't take that long and I'll leave some links in the description. So let's talk performance. And we're using the Blackmagic speed test to check our read and our write speeds here. We'll be looking at four different types of transfer media. Of course, first, there's the SSD on the MacBook Pro. In this case, it's an i7 MacBook Pro from 2017. And then there's a three and a half inch SATA drive or typical internal hard drive. And I use these sometimes to archive footage, or at least I did in the past. So I wanted to see how fast those would be over a USB A connection. Then there's an the external SSD connected via Thunderbolt, which we typically use because we can't store all of our footage on the hard drive for the computer. And we use that external media because it's lightning fast through Thunderbolt 3 or 4 connectivity. And then, of course, there's our 10 gigabit connection through the Synology. And in this case, I'm using the 2017 MacBook Pro I just described that I've been using for a very long time. And then recently, again, the same Synology connected to the 2021 MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. So how'd the data fare? Well, the internal hard drive, which is a good benchmark, was about 414 megabytes per second. That's on the 2017 MacBook Pro. Now for the external SATA drive, that got to 156 megabytes per second, and that's through that local USB-A connection I talked about. Then there's the external SSD connected via Thunderbolt, which is 468 megabytes per second. And what we all came to see, the Synology, how'd it do? Well, we got 465 megabytes per second via the 2017 MacBook Pro and got all the way up to 488 megabytes per second on the M1 Max 16 inch. And I want to be clear, these most recent tests were done in 2022, literally January 1st. So hot off the presses. So this has been a combination of a one year approach as we looked at the data. So what does it all mean? It means I can get the same performance editing write speeds via the Synology via the 10 gigabit per second connection as I did when I was connecting through the Thunderbolt to the portable SSD connection. So the fundamental question is, is it worth it? You got all the data, you got my setup, because I do try to edit these as though I wanted to do the research myself. Like, what would I be looking for? And so after going through all the data and all the numbers, which you just read, I think editing in 10 gigabit is absolutely worth it if you can. It will simplify the workflow. If you're editing in a studio or somewhere at home, I mean, it's just gonna work. And if you can deal with the archiving and you can deal with the upfront cost of getting the hardware, I would say it's absolutely worth it. The technical hurdles to get it started aren't too tremendous. And if you're a little bit of tech savvy, you'll certainly be able to get into it. So all the conveniences and all those hashtag edit goals I was talking about at the start of the video, it ticked all the boxes. So as always, thank y'all for checking us out. Feel free to hit me up if you have any questions or comments and hope y'all have a blessed new year. It's 2022. All right, see y'all the next time. Peace.